Let's take a quick moment out to see how much you've learned so far in this section, because we really have covered a huge amount. We started off looking at what CSS was and why it was a good idea and how we could use it to style our websites. We then looked at both inline and internal CSS. Then we discovered classes and IDs to allow us to apply those styles to certain elements. Then we created some divs to contain our elements. And then we moved on to look at specific CSS properties, starting with colors and then looking at floating, positioning and margins. So that really is a huge amount and well done for making it this far and staying with me. We're now going to look at padding, which allows us to do something very similar to margins, but inside an element. And you'll be pleased to know that we've got just a few videos to go until we've covered the basics of CSS and we're going to do our big website project. I'll tell you more about that later on. So padding is pretty similar to margins, but it works on the inside of an object rather than the outside. So if, for example, we wanted to have a little bit of a gap between the green text here and the edge of the blue div, we could, I'll just get rid of the margin there, we could add a padding of, say, five pixels. And let's now have a look. So that's quite nice. It gives us a little bit of spacing in between the edge of the div and the content. So a quick challenge for you then, could you set the padding within this blue box to be different? You can choose whatever values you like, but different on the top, right, bottom and left. And you can probably work out how to do that. Go for it. All right, hope you managed it. It works in exactly the same way as margins. So we're going to use five pixels, 10 pixels, 15 pixels, and then 20 pixels. Let's have a look. There we go. Might not be that obvious, but we've got five pixels up here, 10 down here, 15 at the bottom, and then 20 on the left. It's worth noting that if we've specified a width as we have here, the padding is on top of that width. So we've got our 400 pixels from say there to there, and then the padding, so the 10 pixels on the right and the 20 pixels on the left, will be on top of that 400 pixels. So quick question, what is the width in pixels, the total width? Hope you got it. It's 400 plus the 10 on the right plus the 20 on the left, so 430 pixels in total. And that's definitely worth remembering. You can get yourself in a lot of trouble if you think that this is 400 pixels and then forget that it's actually 430. All right, so that's more or less all you need to know about padding. And just one more thing I'm going to show you. You may have noticed that there's quite a bit of white space that we haven't programmed into our page here, that's there by default. And browsers have default margins and padding built in to their elements. And that can make things a little bit tricky if you're trying to get a really pixel perfect design. So if you do want to do that and get rid of all of those defaults, then I would do something like, first of all, starting off with the body. So we're now styling the actual body of the page itself and set both the margin and the padding to zero. And let's have a look and see what effect that has. So you can now see it stretches right to the edge of the page. You'll notice as well that we've got this gap between our divs here and a gap up there. If we wanted to get rid of that, then we would actually set both the padding and the margin for the paragraph tags to zero. So that's what's causing that gap there. So if we set both of those in, then everything kind of condenses up. So that might ne not necessarily be what you want, but we've achieved the effect of getting everything really close to everything else. As a quick aside, if you're getting quite excited about this and think you might get really into web design with CSS, then working with something called a CSS reset makes these things a lot easier because these default margins that we saw over here can actually vary from browser to browser. So using a CSS reset in your pages makes those the same so you can be more sure that your website is gonna look exactly the same in every browser. So feel free to investigate that a little bit more 
And definitely if you're having issues that a website that you're making is different in different browsers, putting a CSS reset in there is probably a good idea. All right, so that's as far as we're going to go with margins. In the next video, we'll look at how to add a nice bit of styling to the edges of your divs or other elements using borders. See you there.